Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop. Spring this year begins on March 20th at 524 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, or that's 924 p.m. Universal Time. It is at this time that the sun crosses the celestial equator. With this comes longer days and shorter nights and warmer spring weather here in the Northern Hemisphere. It's just the opposite though in the Southern Hemisphere. Weather-wise, we might have to wait a couple more weeks or so before all threats of frost and freezing weather ends here in the Southeast United States and even later further to the North and to the West and also in portions of Europe. This is also known as the vernal equinox. The what, you might ask? Let's look into this term, uh, such as uh, other terms, the equinox, we have the equilux. What is that? Pascal moon, dominant high tide, and the point of Aries. Yeah, all of these are associated with the beginning of spring. During this time of the year, the Earth's axis of rotation is pointing perpendicular to the position of the sun, resulting in equal amounts of daylight around the globe. In contrast, in June, the northern axis of the Earth is pointing more directly toward the sun, resulting in more solar radiation falling upon the northern hemisphere, with less over the southern hemisphere. The position around March 21st is known as the vernal equinox and can be seen from the satellite image with the terminator of the day and night being nearly vertical. Actually, it is vertical. So here's where it gets kind of fun. Going back to the days of the ancient Greeks and the study of astrology. Now I said astrology, not astronomy. Usually I, I you know, reverse that, but you know, the study of astronomy. But this is what the study of astrology and the sun moving through the constellations of the zodiac. Those Greeks, you know. Anyway, the vernal equinox is also known as when the sun enters the first point of Aries as Hipparchus defined it back in 130 BCE. Back then, it was located in the western extreme portion of the constellation of Aries the Ram. This is the point of the celestial sphere where the ecliptic and the celestial equator cross over. This point gradually moves westward at a rate of about one degree of sky every 72 years. This means that since the time of Hipparchus, the point where the sun crosses the equator, this has shifted across the sky by about 30 degrees and is currently located in the constellation of Pisces, no longer in Aries, and near its border is Aquarius, the water bearer. So due to the precession of the equinoxes, the vernal equinox now occurs in the constellation of Pisces, not Aries. Now back in the time of Hipparchus, the vernal equinox was in the constellation of Aries, the age of Aries. In 68 BC, it crossed into the constellation of Pisces, becoming the age of Pisces. The vernal equinox will remain in Pisces until the year 2597, when it then enters into the constellation of Aquarius. As you know, or you may have guessed, the age of Aquarius. This is from the astronomical calculations. Now, from the astrological or astrology calculations, We've already entered into the age of Aquarius, and that occurred in 2012. Also on the day of equinox, the sun rises directly in the east and sets directly in the west, everywhere on the earth except the poles. So this is a good day to accurately set your east-west direction of your location. What about this term equilux? This is the day in which the day and the night are actually equal in length. Well, you might think, this is the first day of spring, isn't it? But it's not. Actually, here in Savannah, Georgia, for example, at latitude 32 degrees north, it occurred on March 16th. There are two reasons behind this. First, well, the calculation of sunrise and sunset are not based on the center of the sun, but instead on its upper limb. Sunrise is when the upper limb of the sun breaks through the horizon and at the time of sunset when the upper limb passes below the horizon. It takes about a minute for the upper to the lower limb to pass through the horizon. So there's an extra two minutes right there from sunrise to sunset. And then also the atmosphere of the earth bends the light from the sun. This is called refraction. This bends the light upward from the horizon for about three minutes depending on the atmospheric condition. So actually, you observe sunrise before it actually rises and you see it after it sets. 
Here in Savannah, the day of equilux, the sun rose at 7.33 a.m. and set at 7.33 p.m., March 16th. That was 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of night. Now, on the first full day of spring, March 21st, the full day, spring begins you know, late in the afternoon on the 20th, but the first full day of spring is March 21st. Sunrise will be at 7.27 and 37 seconds and set at 7.36 and 20 seconds. That gives a difference of the day being 8.7 minutes longer than the night. What about this Paschal Moon? The Paschal Moon is the first full moon after the vernal equinox. This is the event that the early Catholic Church used to determine the date of Easter. By definition, it occurs on the first Sunday after the first full moon after the vernal equinox. But the definition of the date of the vernal equinox was established by the church in 325 AD as March 21st, even though today it can occur as early as March 19th. So the Catholic Church's definition of Easter is the first Sunday after the first full moon after March 21st. Obviously, this did not take into the account of that procession of the equinox. And this was also set while the Julian calendar was in use. The what? The Julian calendar? Yeah. The, today, most of the world uses the Gregorian calendar proposed in 1582 by, well, Pope Gregory the 13th, but not adopted until about 1752 by most of the English speaking nations. It deleted 10 days going from October 4th, 1582 on the next day being October 15th. Today, it is now offset by 13 days, and by the year 2100, it'll be offset by 14 days. But wait, the Eastern Orthodox Church still complies to the Julian calendar, so their date of Easter, or what they term as the Paschal of our Lord, is off by those 13 days. So, to us, their March 21st on the Julian calendar is our April 3rd on the Gregorian calendar. So by definition, their celebration will be on April 16th, which translates to April 3rd on the Julian calendar. Let me get this straight. Their Easter will be more or less April 16th. The Gregorian calendar, Easter, our Easter, will be on April 9th of this year. Okay, well the Paschal Moon is also associated with the date for the beginning of Passover in the Jewish religion. However, due to leap months falling after the vernal equinox, Passover sometimes starts on the second full moon after the vernal equinox. What about this dominant high tide shift around the equinox? Now, if you live in a coastal community, well, I do, uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, you might notice a change in the daily dominant high tide. There's two tides during the day. Uh, with the arrival of the spring equinox, tides will be translated from a morning dominant high tide to a both morning and evening tide with similar values, that's around the time of the equinox, to the evening dominant high tides that will become firmly established by early April and persist through August, becoming nearly equal once again on the uh, autumnal equinox in September and returning back to the morning dominant high tides through the winter months. Think of it as short days, morning dominant high tides, and long days, evening dominant high tides. So with the observation to the shift in the time of the dominant high tides to the day length equal to the night, to the age of Aquarius, to the Paschal moon, there is more to the vernal equinox than just noting the beginning of spring. With that being said, happy vernal equinox, everyone. Now it's time for me to start my garden.